I am saying that we have to prepare ourselves to use any means necessary to seek our liberation, to seek our liberation from white domination. Memories are easily swallowed by the passing of time. Great spirits become forgotten ghosts. New generations mourn the lack of leadership, as if Canada had no worthy black heroes. Rosie Douglas was our fearless rebel. When I think of Roosevelt Douglas, I think of uh, an analogy, a wheel with spokes and with Rosie sort of at the hub. Rosie emerged as one of those leaders, if you will, who was not shy or unwilling to take on the Canadian government and the Canadian state. He said, our struggle is to make the lives of ordinary people better and valued. He was part of blazing the trail and linking for us a worldwide black Pan-African movement. To tell the story of new immigrants in new lands is to remember a frightening feeling of being trapped in an old world that's washed away and a new world that hesitates to welcome you, to fight or not to fight. What do you accept and at what point do you rebel? We who were new students, new to Canada, trying to find our place in the society, we really looked up to him at his, what we call from the Caribbean, being bold-faced. White people go into the Caribbean, they spread, we spread the red carpet for them in the Caribbean. When we come here, you all treat us as dogs. We were not the preferred immigrants. We were at the bottom of that list of immigrants. And after your tenure here, it was seen that you would leave this country. Why are you so involved with Canada and the co problem of uh, colored people here? Well, first of all, I am a black man. And if there are black people here, I am going to be involved in fighting with black people. Further, having been born in the Caribbean, an area where the Canadian people are exploiting in the most vicious and blatant form, it is my responsibility while I'm here to expose this type of exploitation. We began to kind of really, uh, you know, listen, follow his leadership, and began not only to kind of be educated, but began ourselves to take on the educational uh, institutions. The Roosevelt Rosie Douglas case began in 1969 at Sir George Williams University in Montreal. In February of that year, about 100 people, most but not all of them students, barricaded themselves in the university's computer center. The Sir George Williams, it started from a slow burn, but when it caught fire, it was catastrophic in a whole lot of ways. They were protesting the alleged racism of a university lecturer, and what started as a peaceful protest turned into a rampage with the occupants setting the building on fire and attacking the computers with axes. In the aftermath, five were sent to prison on charges of obstructing the use of private property. Roosevelt Douglas was one of them. He served two years in a medium security prison. Since his release from jail, he's made a full-time career as a militant black power advocate. Hands up, Rosie Douglas! Hands up, Rosie Douglas! Rosie left Montreal and went to Toronto and started to stop the deportation of Rosie Douglas movement. This is where he rose to prominence in the black community. His charismatic leadership breathed life into the struggle for civil rights. Rosie Douglas played a central role in organizing people. So on one hand, you have Caribbean demonstrations, on the other, you have African Liberation Day developments. On one hand, you have the Black Education Project. And Rosie was a central part. He didn't organize or begin all of them, but he was a central figure in working with them and also encouraging other people. One of the things, for instance, um, that came out of all of this movement was the development of the Transitional Year Program at U of T. That was Rosie. That began with Rosie. While Rosie was building a new wave of political activism, the government of Canada was planning on deporting him. I think they're trying to deport Rosie because he's been a consistent struggle against imperialism all the time he's been here. He's been outspoken, he's been a leader, and I think they're trying to silence him. When he was deported, it was quite a significant and traumatic event for many people in the community. Most of us felt a sense of loss in his going. But um, he went home, 
and did as he always does. He landed on his feet, ran for politics, and became the Prime Minister of Dominica. This is a leader that we have to write down in history that spans not only in terms of Toronto, Canada, across the globe, and then coming back to his home country. And even though he's passed, there are monuments in that country recognizing that what he did spanned the globe. He never forgot that he was Dominican and that we had a responsibility, even though we're building here, back to our own countries in the Caribbean and elsewhere. You see, the fight is not an individual fight. In other words, the assassination of, of Malcolm X or Martin Luther King, uh, did not end the black struggle. Indeed, it took it to a higher level. So that my own involvement is an involvement which stands around certain basic principles for social change, for better life, for working people. And as long as those, as long as they are workers, those objectives will always remain. So whether I'm alive or dead is really irrelevant.